Hello everyone, today's video is going to be extremely critical if you really want to improve your middle game, which is considered one of the most essential part in the face of chess. We are going to discuss the first question. There are total 7 questions, so there are going to be total 7 parts in this particular chapter, the middle game. And uh, after watching this complete 7 videos, you are going to simply master in the middle game. And your understanding, particularly in chess, is going to be increased by 100%. So uh, my recommendation would be to watch the complete seven videos, upcoming videos. And this is the part one, the, number, the video number one. In this particular video, we are going to solve the first question, which is the opponent's problem. And what do I mean by it? We are going to find the weaknesses in our opponent's camp and try to uh, eliminate those weaknesses and try to get a better position out of the opening, like in the middle game. So this video is going to be extremely critical. We are going to discuss five critical diagrams. So it's going to be extremely fun and uh, you're going to learn a lot. So I don't want to waste any further time. So let's quickly jump into the video. So we have the position number one and we are playing with the white pieces. So I want you guys to pause the video and try to understand what are the weaknesses our opponent have. So you can pause the video and try to find the weaknesses of black. Okay, so I think after you have resumed the video and you must have probably find the weaknesses of black, which is the pawn on c6, c5, and the a6. These are the isolated pawns and the weak pawns. These are the weaknesses which we can really target. So for example, if any random player is playing a game of chess, many players think to continue the game via f4, trying to expand on the king side, try to put pressure on the king side and try to checkmate the black king. But if you realize, take a deep breath and try to realize that black is already having pretty good defender to protect the king. And the, the weaknesses the black is having is on the queen side. So our target must be to play on the queen side. So a good idea would be to play the move rook to a1. And the idea of rook a1 here is we're simply attacking the pawn on a6. So black must go to protect the pawn on a6 by playing the move rook to a8. This is what the position is demanding. And after rook a8, how should we try to continue the game? We play the move rook to a5. And that is our idea. This is also known as the strategy in the middle game. We play the move rook a1, we play the move rook a5, trying to put pressure on the pawn on c5. And now black plays the move knight, in, knight d7, trying to protect the pawn on c5. And now it is the final moment. What are you going to play in this position if you are playing with white pieces? The answer is you play the move queen e1. And queen e1 is a very interesting move. The idea here is we can even play queen c3, doing a triple attack on the pawn on c5. As well as, we can play the move queen a1, putting pressure on double attack on the pawn on a6. So eventually this position is already practically lost for black. So this is how you should play, try to find the weaknesses in your opponent's camp. So this was the diagram number one, so now let's move on to the diagram number two. Hello guys, welcome to the diagram number two. So in this position, it's black to play, we are playing with the black pieces. So you can pause the video and try to find a good idea if you are playing with the black pieces. Okay, so let's try to find out what are the weaknesses white is having. Let's talk about the king first, because king is the main piece in the game of chess. Black king is pretty safe, but talking about our opponent's king, opponent king is a bit weak because there is no g2 pawn. The g2 pawn is actually on f3. So we can consider the white king a bit weaker. So we can actually target the white king. But how can we really target the white king? A good idea would be to play the move going to d7. Now what's the idea? First, as the pawn is no longer on g2, so the h3 pawn is extremely weak. So we are playing the move queen d7 to go to h3. And second idea is to simply attack the knight on h4, a4. So it's basically a dual idea, multi idea. So black, white is forced to move the knight and now we can simply play the move queen h3. Simply attacking the pawn on h3, f3. And if white tries to push the pawn, we are happy to play the move knight g4. And now it's a force checkmate on h2. If you try to play f3 trying to defend the pawn, still after knight into e3, the position is already lost for white. So f3 is not a good idea. White can go for playing the move queen to e2, trying to protect the pawn on f3. But still the king is still the weak. So how can we really attack the white king? We simply do a rook lift by playing the move rook e5. And the idea could be to play the move rook g5, threatening mate into or even rook h5, again threatening maiden 1. So 
black can white can play the move f4 trying to hit the black black rook but now we can simply play the move knight g4 simply threatening mate in one white is forced to push the pawn and now we can happily capture the pawn on e3 with the rook attacking the queen and also attacking the knight so white must defend it by playing the move queen d2 protecting the knight and also putting some pressure on the rook but now we can simply capture the f3 pawn as well and eventually we are two pawns up and eventually we're going to win the game so this was the diagram number two how you can simply uh, find the weakness in your opponent's camp and like the king was weak and you simply put the pieces on the king side and you simply won the game so this was the diagram number two so now let's move on to the diagram number three so coming to the diagram number three we are playing with the white pieces and we have this particular position so you can pause the video and try to find the weaknesses in the black camp okay so i hope that you guys must must have found, found the weaknesses of black side the weaknesses that black is having is the light square weaknesses as you can see black is not not having the light square bishop and uh, we are having the light square bishop and all the light squares are extremely weak so we can actually consider the black is having the weakness talking about the pawn structure black's pawn structure is pretty happy there is there are no really weakness many players in this particular position try to play on the queen side like black is having three pawns white is having two pawns so let's try to push on the queen side and try to change some pawns but that that's exactly not what the position is demanding the position is demanding to attack on the king as the king is having lots of like weak, weak squares so how we are how we are going to continue the game we play the move queen c4 check it's a check we are taking control of the light squares black picking h8 and now we play the move queen to g4 again taking out the light squares and also threatening mate in one so black must play the move bishop f8 trying to protect the g7 pawn and now how should we continue the game is the main question we can pause the video and try to find this critical move in the chess okay so if you found this correct move proud of you proud of yourself bishop to e4 the idea of bishop e4 is very critical after bishop e4 our idea is to simply play the move queen g3 followed by moving the knight and threatening mate in one and this idea is pretty deadly so black tries to play the move queen f7 trying to take away the g6 square for the for the white queen but now we can simply move the knight and our idea is to play the move bishop to g6 or even knight to g6 can be a deadly idea in the future or even queen f5 threatening again on h7 so black tries to play knight e7 trying to take away the light squares but now we can simply play the move knight g6 check if black trades off the knight we can simply get uh, gain an exchange and eventually win the game so black must move the king and if black tries to move the king we can simply trade off the knight and if uh, he takes with the queen simply queen g6 allows and now queen h7 is a deadly idea and black is already having a bad position and if black captures with the bishop already bishop g6 and win, we win an exchange and eventually the game so this is how you should play this is exactly what the position was demanding the light square was extremely weak so what white did was pretty simple just take control of the light square because we are we were we were having the light square bishop so yeah so this was the third diagram so now let's move on to the fourth diagram so we have the fourth diagram on the board we are playing with the white pieces and you guys can pause the video and try to find the weaknesses in the black cam okay so uh, i'm pretty sure that you guys must have found it the weaknesses are the c7 and the a5 pawn currently we can say that we are having the semi open file on the c file so we can we must try to control the c file and just put the pressure on the c7 pawn and the d5 pawn the d5 square is also pretty weak so we can simply put our knight to d5 so how should we continue the game simply play the move rook c1 putting pressure on the c7 pawn black plays rook c6 rook c8 and now black intends to play the move queen to d7 followed by c6 so how should we continue we we should not allow the opponent to get the opportunity to push the pawn so we simply play the move rook c6 simply fixing the pawn on c7 and what is our idea for example if black just plays bishop d8 and bishop e7 for example we can simply put our knight to d5 which is the most ideal square for the knight and now simply making a triple battery on the c file and eventually gaining the c pawn and once we gain the c pawn you can eventually see how the b5 pawn is a very strong pawn and it is a pass pawn and eventually with the help of the b pawn we are going to win the game 
So to solve the fourth diagram, just find the weaknesses. The weakness was the C7 pawn, even the A5 pawn in the future. So yeah, this is how we should play. This was the fourth diagram. So now let's move on to the final diagram. Okay, so we have the five, fifth diagram, the final diagram on the board. We can pause the video and try to find the weaknesses of black. Okay, so if you found this, I'm pretty amazed. If you found that the D4 pawn is a weak pawn, you are extremely right. Many of the players would be thinking that the D6 pawn is also weak. Yes, it is true, but it is a long-term weakness. To be true, the D6 pawn can't be really easily captured because it is already protected by the two pieces. And we can't really threaten the D6 pawn because we can only threaten it once, but we can't put more pressure on the pawn on D6. But we can actually put more pressure on the pawn on D4. That's exactly what we do. Now, many of the people must be thinking we can might be continue with queen to h6 check because our most pieces are on the king side, so we must try to play on the king side. You, yes, you, you guys are right, but what is the weakness of black? The weakness of black is the pawn on d4. You can try to play a move like h4. It's not, it's not really working because black can happily move the king, try to get the pieces on the king side, which, which are actually really on the king side, and black is having no rib issues. So how should we continue the game? We should continue the game by knight to e2. If you want this move, congratulations. The idea is pretty simple. You put the pressure on the pawn on d4. And there is only one way for black to defend their pawn on d4, which is queen to c5. After queen c5. Now, my question is, how can you put more further pressure on the pawn on d4? So, if you, there are many ways to put that. First idea could be the most, the best idea is to play the move bishop c1 followed by bishop b2, which is actually the best idea to put the pawn on d4. Just imagine, for example, if I just make some random moves like queen c7, bishop b2, queen c6, and takes. And now you can already sense how the bishop on d4 is the, the monster piece. And eventually, with the help of bishop on d4, we can simply win the game. In the initial position, the bishop was extremely bad. So yeah, another way to put pressure on the pawn on d4 was to simply move the rook. And after a move like this, a random move, after queen f2, we can simply capture the d4 pawn as well. So this is how there are many ways to put pressure on the pawn on d4. Just find the weakness in your opponent's camp and you can simply have a good position. Just target that weakness, eliminate that weakness and you are going to have a good position. So this is how you should play the middle game. So this was the first part of improving your middle game. Just uh, the question was the opponent weaknesses or just try to eliminate the opponent weaknesses. Try to find the opponent weaknesses. So yeah, this, uh, that's it for today's video. If this video was essential and it helped you to improve your game, then make sure to like the video. Share this video with everyone and make sure to subscribe to our channel because we are going to come up with these interesting videos like this. And there are seven, uh, six more parts coming up with six more interesting questions. So I hope that this video might have helped you improve your game. If it did, so yeah. So I'm going to come up with these interesting videos like this. So till then, stay tuned and keep watching One Shot Chess.